In this lecture, let's talk about some best practices for making your ads as effective as possible. These are higher level conceptual strategies which you should really understand and understand well because then you'll be able to apply them to your specific business. I can't write your ads for you. Only you could write your ads for you. But what I could tell you is that you could write good ads. I've seen people who literally could not write an ad to save their own life turn into excellent, excellent ad copywriters. So if you understand the fundamental principles, you have a very good shot at ultimately being able to create really awesome ads. Let's take a look at some slides here. Over here is an ad that was pulled live from a Google search results page for one of our clients, um, the Caris Effective Negotiating Seminar. And there's a few things about this ad that really stand out. And first, and, and I'll, as we go through some bullet points, I'll, I'll tell you if, if, if it applies to this ad and why this ad works well. So first of all, highlight what makes your company unique. I think that's like a really important thing to think about um, at the very top level. In this ad, we have in the headline over 1 million attendees. That's something that any other negotiating seminar cannot say, right? So that's the, when somebody reads that, it's not really talking too much about the seminar, it's talking about our legitimacy. It's giving a person a sense of like, listen, this is who we are. It actually taps into the concept of tribal identity as well um, and, and social proof, which is a really, really important concept in writing ads and writing landing pages. If you want to learn more about social proof and these concepts in detail, you could check out uh, some of my other courses, more specifically on landing page design. But over, over 1 million attendees is certainly something that um, is unique to our business. And we wanted to put that in the headline. Again, also using that symbol, we'll get to that in a second. Benefits over features is a myth, okay? So many of you probably have heard, well, it's not totally a myth, but I think it doesn't apply in the context that we're operating in here with Google Ads. There's this concept, and I'm, I'm sure many of you are familiar with it, but briefly that there's two sort of core components of selling a product. They're the benefits of the product and the features of the product. And the classical example that, that's always used is it's better to talk about, when you're selling a vacuum, for example, it's better to explain how you're gonna have a clean room than the features of the vacuum, that it has this motor, it has this engine, it has this suction capability, it has this battery life, it has this extendable wire. Those are all specific features, but the benefit is I'm gonna have a clean room, it's gonna be, and it's gonna be easy to have a clean room, a clean room easily, let's say. And the conventional knowledge has always been focus on those emotional, psychological payoffs. I'm going to have a clean room. Finally, a clean room. Right? Uh, you know, or finally, a vacuum that's stored without any hassle. Right? Those are the emotional, psychological payoffs of using my product. The features would be comes in these colors. It's this price. It, it has this capacity. It has this weight capacity. It has you know, all these things. And that could be applied to any single product or service that's sold. There's features and then there's benefits. Even if you're a consultant, there's like, okay, I'm going to put in this amount of hours. I'm going to bring this amount of, uh, you know, use these resources, use this software for you or buy this, whatever. Those are the features of, let's say, a consulting gig or a consultative business by nature, um, which is what our company is for sure. And the benefits would be like, you're gonna have more profitability from your PPC campaigns. You're gonna have um, a, a business that runs more efficiently if you're a business consultant, whatever it may be. And people always talked about, don't bother with the features, right? People are not interested in features. People are only interested in the benefits. Well, that could be true if you're bringing a new product to market. If you're talking to people who have not expressed interest in your product and, and may not be educated consumers, then sure, it, you'll sell a lot better if you could convey to a person the psychological benefits of using your product. If I'm in the market for, let's say, identity theft protection, right? I don't necessarily right away want to learn about all the different features and the technical aspects. I might be more interested to see whether or not I even want such a product. Do I even want that? What are the emotional psychological payoffs to having identity theft protection, right? However, when it comes to Google ads, we're by and large dealing with people who are expressing interest in our product. We're not only dealing with people who are like, mo well, most people, and the most of the people that are coming to our website through Google ads are not hearing about this product or service that we offer for the first time. Why do we know that? Because they've searched for a product that expresses some sort of commercial intent. And the vast majority of users are in that camp of people who are more educated, they're further down the buying funnel, they understand our products, they understand the services, they want, they're pretty sure usually that they want something in the range of what we sell. So in many cases, I found, and, and our clients have found, that it's extraordinarily effective to talk about the features of our products. What features make us unique? Um, for example, I would, I, would, I would consider having a million attendees a feature of the Kara seminar, although it's not a, 
The emotional, psychological payoffs is that you're going to be able to be a better negotiator. You're going to earn more profits. You're not going to give away as much profit in, the, in your next negotiation. Sure, but a person who's searching for a negotiating, negotiating seminar knows that already. They're now evaluating what's the best negotiating seminar to go to and then showing them a feature that we have a million attendees. We've trained most of the Fortune 500. Those are features that will help us close that sale. If we just spoke about the benefits, we said, oh, negotiating seminars will be so helpful because you're going to earn more profit. I know that already, genius. Like that would be like the sort of the, the feedback. I'm looking to fit to some, for, some, for, for some real information about why, this, why your seminar is better than the other seminar. So give them that information. And that's how most of these Google ads really play out. So if, I, if I'm selling vacuums and I spend all the text in my ads telling people, you're going to have this clean floor, uh, you're, you're, it's going to be the fastest way to pick up crumbs you've ever seen. It's going to take up such little space in your closet, although that's probably more of a feature. It's not really a psychological benefit. But that's great if you're inventing a vacuum and you're trying to sell a vacuum to a person who is not interested in a vacuum. So you explain to them, you've been sweeping your floor for the last 15 years. I have this new thing that's going to make your life easier. That's an emotional psychological payoff. Oh, how does it work? What are the features? Great. But if somebody's searching to buy a vacuum, they, they know that they want a vacuum. So, so I, I'm digressing a little bit, but it's important to understand that because don't ignore the features of your products. Understand that most people searching Google are searching as an educated potential consumer. Include your price, promotion, sales, exclusive offers. All these concepts play into scarcity, urgency, um, social proof, reviews, how many clients you have, how many client reviews you have. Those are all those things that, that give your brand legitimacy are really important as long as they're true. As long as they're true. Don't use unsubstantiated superlatives. Don't say we're the best product in the world. Don't say we're the most amazing uh, electric drill ever, right? But, but if you've been rated the most trustworthy magazine in the country for business news, we have a client actually that has that rating, then put that in the ad. Put that in the ad, like that's huge. If it's legitimate and it's true and it's objective and it's specific and it's measurable and it's verifiable, objective, measurable, verifiable. Remember those three things. Then use them in your ad as much as possible. Those things really work. Price is a good thing like we spoke about in a previous lecture because it allows people to self-identify. They might say, oh, like this is clearly too expensive or it's clearly too cheap, it's not what I want. So you help weed out and avoid some potentially bad clicks. Exclusive offers that are time bound, of course, you could put those in your price extensions and your call out extensions and your even your site link extensions. But if there's an exclusive offer that is sort of working for you, then by, by all means, go ahead and put that in your ad. That would really work really, really well. Use a registered symbol as much as possible like we have over here in the top example of effective negotiating. It does increase click through rate. Again, it lends that legitimacy. It lends that social proof. So when you have a registered symbol and you say we have a million attendees, that's a powerful, potent combination. Although we haven't even spoken about the seminar, right? Yet, we know that this ad is being shown to people who are searching for what we sell already. They're educated to the specifics and the, and the benefits that they, that they stand to gain. We need to tell them that we're the most legitimate. We're the best. This is the place you want to go. Another really important thing is when you're writing your ads, check out your landing page. Where are you sending these people to? Is your ad an appropriate introduction to the more expanded information that follows on your landing page or is it disconnected? Is there a discordancy between the two? If there's a cohesive sort of pattern and there's a, there's a, a, a logical progression between your ad and what you're writing, what you're offering, what you're sort of getting, trying to get a person to do, and the rest of the information on your landing page, whether it be e-commerce or Legion, then great, you're doing a good job. But if you say like, oh, my ad's talking about this and offering this and promising this, but my landing page is not following up on these promises, a couple of things will happen. One is that you'll have a poor conversion rate. And the other thing is that your relevancy score, which is part of your quality score, your relevancy factor will suffer. You'll have a below average relevancy because your landing page will not be relevant to the text of your ad. Google will see that. And your quality score will go down, which means your cost per clicks are going to go up. We haven't spoke, we're going to talk about quality score, of course, in more detail. More and more importantly now, you need to start thinking about mobile devices. So on mobile, make sure to always show call and location extensions if applicable. People on mobile devices tend to want to be either be able to text message the business, call the business, or see locations. So if you're a business that has those three things applicable, that they can, people can message you, leads can message you, call or see locations, you should absolutely offer that option because people know that, that mobile sites are still, they take a long time to load, they might not want to use their data, they might just want to get in touch with you right away, if, especially if it's events or if it's local activities or if it's local services, make sure to give people those options. 
Know your principles of salesmanship, scarcity, urgency, interest, motivation, triggers. In, in a couple of lectures from now, we're going to talk about the BJ Fogg behavioral model, which helps you understand how to incorporate the right calls to action and copy into your ad. And I think it's a really, really important concept. Um, but use scarcity that there's only a few items left. You only have a few more clients that you could take. If, as long as it's true and specific urgency, the sale ends, the promotion ends at a specific date and time. Social proof, testimonials, how many reviews we have, how many clients we have, how many attendees we've had, how many tickets have we sold, how, many, how much revenue have we generated, as long as it's, again, true, measurable, objective, and verifiable. Those are really important things. And we're going to talk about the right type of trigger call to action in a future lecture because it does, um, it does necessitate more time and more depth to it. Most people make a decision based on the information in the headline and you cannot rely on the description. That's another important thing to realize. Whatever, all the punches that, you could, that you're planning on packing, try to pack them into your two headlines. Studies have shown, research has shown that descriptions are not read nearly as much as headlines and that's quite obvious. We don't necessarily have to have research studies uh, to corroborate and validate that, that idea, uh, which is apparent from an anecdotal perspective. You could, you could understand how you guys all read results and ads and you sort of make decisions quicker than, than, than um, it would take to read through all the text of an ad. And because page load speeds overall have gotten much better, people are much more open to just clicking a few ads you know, the top two, three results, top two, three organic results, and then they'll let the landing pages do the talking to see, you know, which website they want to look further into. They don't really make their decision just from an actual ad. People are always clicking the bounce, the back button to go back and, and click another result. Um, so focus on your headlines. It's the most important part of your ad copy by far. Make sure you stand out. Make sure you're unique. This is not a specific strategy that could be implemented in any specific place, but you should, be, you should be aware of what the other ads look like on the page. You should always be spot checking. So if you're running, if you're running keywords, if, and spot check your main keywords. So if your top few keywords are office chairs with wheels, or high back office chairs, or executive office chairs, or whatever it may be for your business, periodically go to Google and, and do a search and see what the other ads look like. What could you say different? How could you stand out? How could you be unique? It's really, really important. Don't be afraid to use humor. Don't be afraid um, you know, to use a little bit of attitude. Don't be afraid to stand behind the quality of your products. Don't be afraid to brag about your, your results. You, get, you must stake a claim in the ground and double down on that. That's how, you, you might alienate some people and you typically will. People who are iconoclastic, people who stand out in the world a little bit, people who are a little bit out of the ordinary, they do alienate some people, but they also attract other people with much more force, right? And you know that, we, I mean, whether you're, you're like that or you have people in your life that you know that are like that, that's how it works and that's how people relate to advertisers and different brands. So stand out, don't be afraid to be unique, use humor, um, use a little bit of attitude and most importantly, don't be afraid of your success and don't be afraid to showcase your, your success as long as it's not being showcased in an obnoxious way. So you could talk about your testimonials again, reviews, um, all different sorts of things. So that's a good starting place for some best practices um, when it comes to writing ads. And I also want to convey how important research is. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you a case study for how we've increased the conversion rates and the profitability of an account by doing some research and changing around our ad copy based on the research we found. Because I want to really help you see how valuable doing some hard, good, old-fashioned research could actually be. And then we'll take it from there. So thank you very much. Hope this has been some, uh, some helpful, useful advice and techniques. And I'll see you guys in a few seconds in the very next lecture.